claims that she didn't have any uh, experiment, experience in uh, government. She says, well, I'm not a political, uh, uh, I'm not a professional politician. Well, the only reason she's not is because she couldn't beat uh, Barbara Boxer. But then she gives her qualifications. Uh, she says that she's worked on consulting gigs with the State Department and the CIA. Well, I guess she's eminently qualified if she uh, worked for the CIA, because that's the way the entire government works now, as if everything is a national security secret. Of course, we've also got uh, a massive uh, case of hypocrisy going on at MSNBC. We've got multiple people now. It's up to four. This is the fourth one who's come out with, um, you know, they're, they're constantly pushing big government, constantly pushing wealth redistribution. And yet these people apparently are not paying their taxes, even though they're telling you that uh, you need to pay your taxes and redistribute income. But it's nothing compared to what the Clintons are doing. Reuters did an investigation on their own of the Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton Foundation, and they found that the family's charities are refilling, are refiling at least five annual tax returns after they found errors in how they reported donations from governments. And they say they may audit other Clinton Foundation returns in case of other errors. Now, for three years in a row, beginning in 2010, the Clinton Foundation reported to the IRS that they had received zero funds from foreign and U.S. governments. Those entries were untrue. Actually, several foreign governments had contributed tens of millions of dollars to the Clintons. And it's interesting that not only is Reuters doing this investigation, but the New York Times is looking at this as well. We've got the book that's coming along, and they referred to this uh, book, Clinton Cash, uh, that's going to be released uh, shortly. But they also did a full article about uh, another pay-for-play scandal. Cash flowed to Clinton Foundation as Russians pressed for control of uranium company. And I got to say that when the New York Times is piling on to the Clintons, they're in big trouble. Uh, I still think she's going to come out of this, but it certainly looks like even the establishment liberal press is coming after her big time. Listen to what happened back in uh, January 2013, they say. There was an article that detailed how the Russian Atomic Energy Agency, Rosatom, or Ros, Rosa, Ad, Rose Adam, had taken over a Canadian company with uranium mining stakes that went from Central Asia to the American West. Now, this has made it one of the largest uranium producers in the world. And when the Russians took this over, it brought Putin closer to the goal of controlling the global uranium supply chain. But... The untold story, they say, behind this is one that involves not just Vladimir Putin, but also Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. At the heart of the tale, they say, are several men who are leaders of the Canadian mining industry, who were major donors to Bill Clinton and his family. They eventually sold all this off to the Russians. They created a company called Uranium One. Now, the reason that the State Department got involved with this is because, of course, uranium is considered to be a strategic uh, mineral with national security implications. So it had to be approved by a lot of different government agencies, including the State Department. And the interesting thing about it is that when Hillary Clinton's State Department approved this, they immediately received uh, donations from these Canadian mining executives. And this is something that is going to be explored in detail in the upcoming book, uh, Clinton Cash. But as I point out, the Clinton Foundation right now has $250 million in assets. And here's the punchline at the very end of the article. They talk about how, well, they looked at this and there was supposed to be no export allowed of this uranium. That's how they justified this. Uh, that didn't happen. They're exporting it to a lot of different countries. And they have changed, they've taken the company private and they have changed the name to ARMS, <laughs> ARMS, A-R-M-Z. There you go, right out in the open. That's what I say, the corruption and the uh, pay for play is right out in the open. One of the things that uh, we always look at this, of course, is to know that elections are an advanced auction of stolen goods. As I've mentioned before, that was uh, what H.L. Minken pointed out, and it is even more true today. It's always been true, but it's also not just buying influence before things happen, but it is also now quite clearly a selection, more than it is an election. We just pointed out yesterday that uh, we've got a lot of Republican candidates that are going to be going to the Koch brothers to get donations. Well, of course, there's something called the Sheldon primary. Yes, 
And uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back. A very rich casino operator who spent nearly $100 million on the last election. He has his own personal primary because there's a pot of gold at the bottom. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's very easy to be a criminal. All you need to burglarize a home is one simple household tool, a pair of scissors. If your home security system can be compromised by a criminal using scissors, then you're making it easy for them. Almost every home security system, even those sold by big name companies, has a weakness. The phone line. You shell out 1500 bucks, get locked into a long-term contract, and think you're safe. But a burglar can destroy your alarm in seconds with one snip. And when a burglar cuts your phone line, you're you're defenseless. defenseless. Simply Safe Home Security is the smarter choice. Built by Harvard engineers, Simply Safe uses a wireless connection to call the cops. Scissors can't cut it, and that means your home stays safe. 24/7 professional monitoring is under $15 a month with no contract. Simply Safe Home Security keeps you safer than the other guys for half the cost. Protect your home with the alarm you can trust. Simply Safe. Go to simplysafedefense.com now for an exclusive 10% offer. That's simplysafedefense.com. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. The folks at My Patriot Supply get it. They know the world can be unpredictable, and there are some scary things happening right now. The only way we can make sure we maintain our independence, despite the situation, is to take control and get prepared. They've come up with a deal that will help you get prepared for anything. Right now, you can get a four-week food supply for only $99. That's almost 50% off the online price. Call 800 274 3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Limit two per caller. This offer isn't available online, so take advantage of this opportunity to get prepared today. 800 274 3070 to get your four week food supply for the incredible price of only $99. Call 800 274 3070 right now. That's 800 274 3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Joining me now is Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. And of course, uh, next week we're going to have the premiere of uh, The Avengers Part 2. And Robert Downey Jr. is making, a, uh, making the tours, promoting the movie. He went to an interview in the UK where the guy tried to shame him and out him as a conservative. We're going to play that for you and let uh, Paul break that down with some comments on it. Before we go to Paul, real quickly, I want to let you know that we have 
Silver Bullet at the InfoWars Life Store, 50% off right now. That's a $15 per bottle savings. That's 30 parts per million. It's preparedness grade silver, and right now you can get that at 50% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Also, all of our ProPure water filters are 10% off with the promo code WATER at the InfoWarsStore.com. Joining us now is Paul Joseph Watson. Paul, thanks for joining us. Hi, David. Good to be back. Let's start out real quickly. Let's just run this clip, and we'll get uh, your comments on it. This is Robert Downey Jr. Of course, this is part of his promo tour for Avengers 2 coming out next week. Let's run this clip and see what this interviewer in the U.K. Uh, did to him. I mean, what I'd really like to, I'd really like to ask you about a quote you gave to the New York Times. Um, and I don't, I don't want to pry, so if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But what you said to the New York Times once was, it was about, it was after your incarceration, and you said, you can't go from a $2,000 a night hotel suite to a penitentiary and understand it and come out a liberal. And I just wondered what you meant by that. Well, the funny thing is, and, and I appreciate your, your point of view, things that you <laughs> said five, seven years ago were things you said in an interview that made sense to you at the time. I could pick that, I could pick that apart for two hours and no be, clo be no closer to the truth than I'd be giving you some half-assed answer right now. Um, I, I couldn't even really tell you what a liberal is. So therein lies the answer to your question. <laughs> But the, the statement sort of stands by itself, doesn't it? I mean, d does that mean you're, you're not a liberal or that you came out of prison not being a liberal? Uh, are we promoting a movie? To me, the <laughs> thing is that it's... I'm certainly not going to backpedal on anything I've said, but I, would, I wouldn't say... Actually, I wouldn't say I'm a Republican or a liberal or a Democrat. I think when I was talking to the person who was doing the interview that day, and, um, and that just happened to be my opinion. That's the nice thing, is you can have opinions and they kind of change and flow. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's life and that's growing older, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, you say we're promoting an interview, I mean, uh, promoting the movie. I mean, obviously, you're doing a promotional round of interviews, and that's why we're talking about the movie. But we also would like to talk <laughs> a little bit about you, and I don't know how, how comfortable you are, you know, talking, talking about yourself at the moment. You I mean, have as much time as anyone else will. Yeah, well, okay, well, then let me just ask you a few more questions and you can answer them if you want to and not if you don't want to. I mean, just looking over your um, shoulder. <laughs> well, I think we've got two, three more minutes on our, on our, on our agreement. Your foot's I mean, starting to jump a little bit. You better get to your next question. <laughs> uh, you, um, the reason I'm asking about the past is that you... You've talked in other interviews again about um, your relationship with your father and the role of all of that in, uh, you know, the dark periods you entered and, and taking drugs and drinking and all of that. And I just wondered whether, you know, you, you think you're free of all of that or whether that's still something... I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, That's I'm just asking questions. Okay, question. at this point, he gets up and he walks off, Paul. Yeah, yeah, what about that? What are your comments on that, Paul? It's pretty amazing. Well, this guy, Krishnan Guru Murphy, who is a vehement liberal, is known for these kind of gotcha interviews. He did one with Quentin Tarantino probably about a year ago where he pushed him over and over again on the question of violence. So he begins by saying, you know, I'll ask you this question. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. Downey Jr. answers the question and then he keeps pushing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And basically, behind the scenes, it's known that Downey Jr. is a conservative slash libertarian. But in Hollywood, not being a liberal is a career killer. Mm -hmm. And James mm -hmm. Woods, another famous actor, came out back in 2013 and said that he never expected to get any work again in Hollywood because he criticized our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. So the reaction to this interview, and at the end of it, Downey Jr. basically walks out because he starts asking him about his prior drug use and his relationship with his father when he was supposed to be there to promote a movie. The reaction is that this is basically conservative shaming. I mean, he says, you know, over and over again, so you're not a liberal, you're not a liberal. He's trying to shame in, um, Robert Downey Jr. into admitting that he's not a liberal. And this you know, is a guy that has not injected politics yeah, into absolutely. his career. He has these views privately, and yet there seems to be this obsession with uh, this, this dominance in Hollywood of liberalism over conservatism to the point where holding any kind of conservative outlook 
Hang House on a second, shame. Paul. We've got to take a break. We're going to be right back. Yeah, he said at the very beginning of the interview, I appreciate your point of view. He wasn't fooled. He knew exactly where this guy was going. Stay with us. We'll be right back.